If you've captured some images with your color camera, like a DSLR, and you want to harness the power of image stacking for a better image, this video is for you. Deep Sky Stacker, or DSS, is a free Windows-based software that has stood the test of time and continues to be a great resource for astrophotographers. In this video, I'll go over the dead simple process of stacking your Deep Sky astrophotography images in Deep Sky Stacker so you can get your first successful stacked image. For this tutorial, I'm gonna use some images I took back in 2022 with my mirrorless Canon EOS RA camera and a Rokinon 135mm lens. I didn't use any filters, but I did use a star tracker to take long exposure images using my intervalometer. I think that this is a relatable project for many people getting started in astrophotography. If you've never stacked your astro images before, I think you'll find that Deep Sky Stacker is a game changer and that the results are pretty reliable. If you wanna learn even more about this process, you can check out my image processing guide in the description. Let's get into it. We'll start by opening Deep Sky Stacker. This is the latest version, 5.1.5. And the first thing you wanna do is open picture files. So you can just navigate to your images that you wanna stack. In my case, this is the North America Nebula captured with a Rokinon 135 millimeter lens and a DSLR. And we'll select all of those and put them into Deep Sky Stacker to kind of see the quality of each one. Deep Sky Stacker is great for that. So I'll put in my light frames and it will tell me I have 109 light frames. They're pre-checked right now. We can click on the individual files to see a brief preview of them. We can also see information like the resolution, the ISO setting I used, and the exposure length. Don't be alarmed if you see a bit of a weird exposure length. It's, these are one minute and 30 second exposures captured with inter intervalometer. Uh, it's showing slight variation those, in those values, which is not anything to worry about. We'll also pick our dark files. So if you're familiar with calibration frames, those can be helpful for, for stacking your final image. It looks like in this case, because I was out camping with my DSLR and lens and a star tracker, I wasn't uh, capturing flat frames and bias in this case, but I did take some dark frames with the lens cap on. So we've got all of those and we can see that they all match up in terms of exposure length and gain, which is great. And that kind of stuff will stand out as you go along the image files here. So at this stage, we can go ahead and uh, register the pictures. So we'll click check all and then register checked pictures. So uh, we don't wanna stack them yet. Uh, we can leave this automatic detection of hot pixels on and just in the advanced here, maybe the slider, slider probably starts at about 10% and you can compute the number of detected stars. And all this means is these are the number of stars that DSS is gonna use to register and align these pictures. So we have way too many here, 26,000. It's not that it's a bad thing, it was just gonna slow this process down. So if I move that up to about 60%, it's going to detect less stars, the threshold is increased and 4,000 is plenty enough. So will still register properly, but without using too much where it's gonna take a long time. So you can adjust this to uh, balance out speed and um, accuracy. So we won't mess with the stacking settings or anything yet. We're just uh, registering the pictures. And through this registration and alignment process, we'll see even more information about our light frames, including a very useful score category. DSS has finished aligning and registering these images, our light frames, and we now see a score associated with all of the frames. So our best score here, and we can sort it by clicking on the column, our best score is about 34,500. And if we scroll down, our worst score is 18,000. So as I click those, you can see a preview image, and there really isn't a whole lot of difference to the eye but because of this advanced scoring feature, we can see things like star size, number of stars, the sky background, all to get a better idea of the quality of our light frames. And ideally for an image stack, you wanna st stack only your best light frames. So what we can do, we can manually go through and see the subtle differences in star size. So this is full width, half maximum, a star measurement size and the smaller the better. We can see number of stars. You know, normally more stars means you're in better focus to get every star in the field. 
and then the sky background, the higher number here, the brighter that sky background is. So if you're shooting in a light polluted area and you're getting closer to the light dome, you'll see that sky brightness value go up or if the moon comes out, all those little things. So a darker sky is best. Based on all that information, I think we can safely just get rid of the worst few frames based on our score feature here. So I've already deselected anything below 28,000. Again, you really wouldn't see much of a difference between the, the one right on top of it and this one by the eye, but we know it's just a little bit worse. So just to make our stack a little bit better, I've removed the, the bottom six or seven image frames. So you may remove more than that, but everything looks good here and we can move on to stack checked pictures. So everything that's checked is gonna be a part of our image stack. When we do that in the stacking steps dialog box here, we can see um, our total estimated exposure time will be about two hours and 30 minutes, which is pretty decent. Um, we are not using any flat or bias files. So we're getting a warning there saying that we should have used those. And then the, uh, we're just using a standard mode and we go into the stacking settings here. You'll see I have a mode called enable two times drizzle on. This is something you may wanna use, especially if you're undersampled. It will double the resolution of your image by kind of connecting the pixels between the, the, the data. Um, in this case, just to make things quicker, I'm gonna leave it off, but that's a feature you might wanna explore using. Uh, just know that the processing time for the stack is gonna take quite a bit longer. Everything else I've got at the default settings here, the standard mode for stacking. We've got the Kappa Sigma clipping um, algorithm, which is good for removing uh, star trails, or not star trails, satellite trails, airplanes, stuff like that. The things that you actually wanna average out and remove. So we'll keep all of that the same. And then using the recommended settings here, we've got everything set to the default pretty well. And you can kind of match these settings if you want to get a similar to re result as me, if you're using a, you know, a DSLR color camera like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And this is gonna take a few minutes. We're actually doing the image stacking and the calibration using those dark frames now. Okay, this is the exciting part. So DSS has finished stacking the image. You get a preview image here. Of, we can see the North American Nebula and the Seder region nearby. And we can also see at the top that our total exposure time is two hours and 31 minutes. We've used 101 frames. Um, the, it's, it's exported this file, autosave.tiff, which I'll show you where to find in a minute. And then also at the bottom here, you can see these sliders that are just begging you to mess around with. You do not want to play with the image at all any further in Deep Sky Stacker. As far as we're concerned, we've used this program to its max. And from here, we'll want to take the image into Adobe Photoshop or PixInsight or wherever you do your post processing. It's done its job of creating this master file. So like I said, it's auto created this, this autosave.tiff file. And where you'll find that is if you open up uh, we'll open it up in Photoshop. And if we see where we kept our light frames, there should be a, a new uh, file in here called autosave in the same folder as your light frames. That's the default spot it puts it in. So I can open it up here in Photoshop. And there it is there. And now we can do all of the fun stuff with, uh, you know, color calibration and sharpening and, and all of that great stuff. Not that I'll get into a full on Photoshop tutorial here, but the main thing you'll want to do right out of the gate if you're using Photoshop is to go change the mode to a 16 bit image. And then in the drop down here for the method, change that to exposure in gamma. Now you've got an image you can actually work with uh, in adjusting curves and levels and all that fun stuff. So you have a real starting point here for your master image. And just because it's bothering me, this color cast here, I'll show you how quickly you can get rid of that. We're just gonna use the set gray point. And now we have a, a more uh, natural looking image. It's a real starting point, um, but Deep Sky Stacker has cr created this great intermediate file for me to process further. So hopefully that was useful to you. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that was useful. If you wanna practice your image stacking, I've included a link to the exact files I used for this tutorial in the description for you to try out. You can also join the newly created Astro Backyard Discord group 
through Patreon. This is a great place to learn from others and hang out with an engaged group of imagers. Until next time, clear skies.